I'm sure my mom was just trying to protect me. Hi guys, and welcome back to Switch Up. As promised, our winner of the free game this month is the one and only Corey. Please drop us an email on the usual address and we'll get that over to you as soon as possible. And in terms of the patron winner, if you check out the patron now, chat, I'll be posting that in the next few minutes. The Walking Simulator, as it's become affectionately known, is a game where you spend the vast majority of your time doing, well, just that. The story-driven experiences often remove the potential threat of death to be replaced with something else. What Remains of Edith Finch is a story about stories, and I guess that's one of the reasons it was received so well. But is it really a story worth telling? Let's find out. But it had to end one way or another. The Finch family are a complex and mysterious one, and you begin by reading the diary of Edith as she undertook a return to the abandoned family home. Taking control of her in the first person, the main gameplay loop involves slowly, sometimes painfully, wandering about the old house and listening to the internal monologues of her as she extrapolates the family events that took place. The house was exactly like I remembered it, the way I'd been dreaming about it. The method of delivery tends to be a handwritten note or a letter, which will then begin the life and inevitable death of that family member. 1947. Dear Diary, I'll be gone Before I go too in depth with how these play out, because that's where the game has its unique identity, it's worth noting that you'll play as several different characters throughout the game. Edith Finch is an incredibly linear experience. The tale is predetermined and you are the vehicle through which it is told, and this is where the game will be make or break as with any story. If you find an affinity with these characters then the three or so hour long tale will be a pleasant one. If you prefer diverging paths or branching choices, then you may potentially feel a little shoehorned into making choices or undertaking actions simply to push the narrative, rather than out of any autonomy. What I will say is that the story is strongly delivered expertly at times. A standout for me is the tale of the young daughter in the family who transforms into several creatures throughout it. From the outside you're never fully sure which elements of them are exaggerations or imaginary and as I mentioned at the beginning it is about the stories themselves. Their authenticity, their credibility, which is where this tale is most clever. You're never fully sure if this family is cursed or just unfortunate. It will be up to you, the reader, as it were, to make those choices. Control of the character is easy, but there are a few optional omissions that irked me a little bit. I understand the pacing is intentionally slower, and for that reason you won't find a run button. What I would have liked are some form of motion control implementation. In a world largely held together by the visuals, one of the biggest ones is the environment, and indeed the Finch House, and it is ram-packed with visual storytelling. But instead of a family, there were just memories of one. So an option to flick the Joy-Con around to quickly look at the overflowing shelves or other family heirlooms would have been beneficial. I enjoyed how you physically interact with the world and the items within it. Much like the recent Observer game that I reviewed, when you need to open a door or pick up an item, you'll hold a button and then use the right stick to directly control and manipulate it. A door is pulled open, a hatch slid up, it really adds a level of immersion. This game would be perfect in VR. In this way the experience is quite a tactile one, and the environments and level design are quite clever. A maze of tunnels, hidden doors and memories await. What you won't find here are any heavy puzzles, instead some minor tasks which play out a little like mini games take place. They tend to be very simplistic, but I must admit at times they were a touch more mundane for me, where I couldn't quite find the exact bit it wanted me to photograph, and as such it just would not progress. Remembering what Glenn said in his recent level creation guide for Mario Maker about a good level design, meaning you know where to go based on the choices of the world you're presented. I can't help but feel just a couple of the moments misfired a touch. Now having said that, the actual house itself is incredibly well designed. I mentioned early each room serves as a time capsule through which to relive the story of its occupant. There are some standout moments of excellent narration, the comic book sections are incredibly well written and reference classic genre defining series. America's most unfortunate family. For me personally though it just ended too soon or at least felt like it hadn't fully resolved. Perhaps that was the intention but I left feeling like something was missing. That being said the storytelling is outstanding and the gameplay decent. It just lacked some of the intrigue I had with maybe something like Firewatch, perhaps due to there being no other character to bounce off.
off. Now the overall gameplay is benefited by that storytelling but didn't really set my world on fire like it has with many. Overall for me it scores 16 out of 20. While controls have some clever uses in the different sections and the intuitive world manipulation are a nice touch. Controls score 16 out of 20. Visually the game is very impressive for the most part. It seems to be running slightly below native resolution at what looks to be around 30 frames a second. The house design is excellent with the numerous paraphernalia that accompanies a long family history adorning the walls. From the multitude of pictures to the remnants of lost members possessions almost frozen in time in the rooms littering the house. It all feels authentic. Some of the memory flashbacks also carry unique art styles that do a lot for the delivery which was a nice touch. The audio is pretty great. Wanted to fly. From the excellent voice acting to the mysterious and sometimes moving music. There are some incredibly creative sections that combine visuals and audio to great effect. Visuals score 17 out of 20 and the audio 18 out of 20. The game costs £17.99, $19.99 or €19.99 and there's no doubt in that they ported the game well, but at a little over the three hours it took me to complete it, I'm most definitely in the wait for a sale camp with this one. If what I've said above intrigues you greatly and you're a massive fan of, of narrative adventure games then maybe do as I did and take the plunge, but yeah I'd say a sale on this one, it's, it's, just, it's just a touch pricey for the length offered. Perhaps at around £11 or $13 and it would be an instant buy. I guess it really depends how impactful you find the story which will determine its overall worth to you. Value scores 13 out of 20. Inside the mailbox were bills from seven years ago. Marked urgent. Open immediately. Now I enjoyed what remains of Edith Finch. I just didn't love it the way that some people seem to. There seems to be several titles that almost get a touch overblown by the media, so much so that the actual experience never lives up to it. It has some amazing sections, don't get me wrong. However, I found the final resolution to be lacking and a little bit self-indulgent. Now, having said all of that, it still seems to have scored really well on our scale based on the sum of its parts, all being of a very good standard. So I guess that would fall in line with what the rest of the world thinks. It scores a switch up score of 80%. It does what it tries to do very well indeed and I can see why so many people loved it. It just didn't fully grab me the same way as it has so many others. Well done to Corey who's won our free subscriber game this month and we really appreciate all the support you've given us as we make our way to 40,000. As always, for all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. See ya! But now I had questions about my family that only the house knew the answer.